Palm Beach again tonight. We're after cod or flatfish. Right now, it's kind of calm, you think, and then the swell's going to come in. It looks like Hawaii sometimes. Four meter swells. It's amazing. Huge waves. Huge waves. Baits. Right, lugworm. Frozen. We got garfish as well. Waiting for that to defrost. Um, rigs tonight. Pulley pattern off there's we got lugworm baits on hairs as usual. Big fat ones. That's a tree out uh, mustard demon circle. And uh, same on the other one. Got a cone lead. Uh, I'm gonna get this one now lashed out and I'm gonna bait up the other one. The other one's got uh, three old life baits and a hair, a little pink hair, big girly thing, like it. Let's go. So the cannons are the SK4s, 5 to 7 ounce. We've got the Meg 525s, all hail Meg 525. 50 pounds, sorry, 40 pound braid, 100 pound mono or braid leader. It's all far strand. So I'll get the other one baited up and get it lashed out. Yeah. Nice big lug bait. And these are the hairs I'm going to use now tonight. Maybe it's a little bit too long. Trim it down, so. Start there again. So it's about that much too long. Trim that off. This is too frozen looking here. Just off the top, off the top, all you need is a bit to put the hook through. That's really it, you know? So it's actually crap out there. You put that in the hook. That's it. All experimentation for me fishing anyway. As you can probably tell, these hairs are meant for frozen baits or cut baits, as the Americans would say. So, that's what they look like now. Lovely jubbly. Yeah, fully pattern after. Great stuff. What's this? It's cool. Well, look at it, look. Boom. Crazy. It's an easterly wind tonight. So this was the, this is what I was waiting for. It was blown for two weeks, westerly, and I was waiting for this swell, but I thought it had already been and gone. Apparently, I was a day early. So I might have to come back again tomorrow. But you never know. I mean, trying to land a fish with this is gonna be a little bit challenging. But we give it a lash anyway. Do a South African cut. South African cast. I haven't lifted my tongue. That's where that's where it landed. And now it's pulling the, the line. So that's quite a it's quite a cast. South African cast is brilliant. So that was it. I'm up nice and high as well. That also helps with the casting as well. Um yeah. The reels are all wet because uh, I washed them out last night so the, the line's still nice and wet. That always helps with the casting as well. Um, like I said, there's an easterly on my back there. It's blowing uh, four meters a second. It's not very fast, but it definitely helps. Great rods, great reels. That's all you need. Have the rods nice and high up. Keep them out of the swell. If the wave bounces on the line like that, it's just gonna pull the lead weight out. So we can't have that happening. So it has to be out of the, out of the toe there. You see the wave curl over now. When a big one comes in, it crashes down. And if it hits the line, if the line's sitting right down there, it'll pop that lead out. The whole lot will come, you won't notice. And then uh, the whole lot will get, the line will get tangled up down here and, and everything. And who knows, maybe the other rig goes into the next one and so on, talking from experience. So, because you're baiting. Something new I got. 
these silicone um, grips. They're nice when it's cold, when it's wet, when you've got fish oil all over your hands. If you're fishing all day with fish baits, doesn't matter if you change your towel every time and wash your hands with soap and water, you'll be all right, but it tends to build up over the day. And then sometimes the rod will slip out of your hands or whatever. Well, it happens to me like that. It's happened twice in my life. That's twice too many. Uh, it didn't break a tip rig either time because it didn't hit the ground, but you know, if you fish out of pear or something like that, or it goes down onto the beach and it clips a stone or whatever, then you've got a cracked tip ring. And if you're fishing with braid, you're definitely knackered. Definitely. You cut that thing to bits. If anybody wants to know where I got them, contact me on Messenger. Billy Fishing, and uh, I'll send you a link for them. They're a bit expensive, but I believe they're worth it. The expense is actually the device to put them on the rod. It's about this wide around, it's like a, a coil of plastic. You slide that over, over the, the over the blank, and you pull it out like a spring, and it lies where you position it. And apart from that, there's no way you can get them on. And you definitely can't get them off unless you cut them off, that's it. So once they're where they are, that's where they are. I put two on each rod, just to make sure I have somewhere to hold it anyway. So that's my, that's my spread there. We just got a slack line. Which wasn't a wave. So we're going to go down and see what we got. And hopefully it's the first cod I've caught in 10 years. But this swell has to bring in some type of fish. This is just for the beginners. When you're on a beach like this with a swell like today. There's going to be a place like this. Now most of the time the waves won't come up here but it's not a good place to go especially when it gets dark and you can't see out in front of you so this when the swell comes in will be filled with water so there'll be a meter and a half of water there where you might be standing and that will not be good when it goes the other way yeah i think we're in i think we are it's not very big though well, that was a hit anyway. So, the camera shut off in the surf there, or uh, just as the fish was coming into the surf there. So we've got like, I don't know, I'll get the measurement tape. We're not gonna put it back, we're gonna keep it. For the mother-in-law, they're nice and fat at this time of the year. And it's probably the best time to eat them. So we've got 35 centimeter flounder. This is what I'm talking about here. This is about, this is about the average size. You get smaller ones, but this is about the average size and they get bigger, <laughs> like this size. <laughs> so I'm going to ikajimi this fish. So now I'm going to pass the rod through the hole I made, which you didn't see because the camera was off. But anyway, there we go. Look at that right the way down, all the way out the end. That's that fish, Ikejimi anyway. The tail's quite thin, so I had a problem getting the wire to pass through all the way. So this fish is going to be absolutely delicious for a flounder. So I don't know how that flounder produced the slack line bite. It must have been a cod as well. So I think we'll right, right down on the right night eventually. Two weeks of a storm, non-stop. And now the swell arrives today. So, I'm going to do a debate now for the one we just caught the flounder. We are fishing for cod, but these flounder are quite big and they will take a cod bait without any difficulty. Lovely. So I changed the lead to a grip wire. Yeah. It's really rough out there tonight. It's a lot of swell. Well, it's not rough, but it's a lot of swell. So I'm going to bend the wires back, tighten them up a bit. The other one doesn't seem to be holding anyway. So there's not much of a current, but there's quite a bit of a swell which is different for here. It's when we tend to get the cod and stuff. So we cast it out, see if we get on again. All right, I took in the second rod, and now I'm getting this one to go out again. Just gonna do a set after cast. Just check it, see if it's free. Throw it into position. Woo! <laughs> so I got the rods there, they're nicely set up. There's not too much pressure on the line, but enough that you can see a uh, fish. We're after cod, so big clumsy cods to make themselves very uh, 
noticeable as a bite anyway. In this weather, they're just gonna hammer those baits, tear that lead out, and you'll just get a slack line. We've already got one in the bucket anyway, so the mother-in-law will be very happy with that now. 35 centimeter one. Yeah, it's dark, and I can see the, the rollers breaking out there without the light on, so they're getting bigger, I think. <laughs> I don't know about this. It's getting pretty dodgy. One night I, I lost a reducer and some tackle off, some other tackle, what, chopping bars and knives and, and measuring tape and everything, like just in this type of weather here. Um, I thought I was far enough back. I'm further back than I was that time as well, but I thought I was far enough back. And uh, yeah, it was just a freak wave in the middle of the night. I came and swamped, swamped the camp. Box, everything floating around, it's running around like an Egypt, grabbing stuff everywhere. But um, I lost the reducer off one of my favourite rods. Look, it's Billy fishing on Billy, but well, damn it, it's Billy fishing on Billy fishing on YouTube. Is this the first time I think it is? My own channel on my own channel. I love this guy, he's brilliant. He is. There he is, look at him. He's handsome as well. Love this guy. Nicest guy I know, actually. He's also incredibly modest it's the modestest guy i ever met actually brilliant he is you should all subscribe to this guy if you want to watch a fishing show with some taste and quality <laughs> oh shit we got a good bite wait a minute sad belly fishing we got a fish and quite a good one by accounts i would say judging by the way the rod is just dancing up and down with so many false alarms. Yeah, we got a fish. Yeah, we're in. Yeah, it feels to be very nice as well. Must be a cod. He is pulling. Oh yeah, this is gonna be a nice fish if I get it in. It's gonna keep pressure on the fish. Not too much, of course. This is on the circle hooks. It feels like he's come off, damn it. If I land this fish, it'll be a bloody miracle. Wow, there he is. Right, 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 right. First one in years, man. Holy crap. <laughs> Doesn't even look like it's legal. Game good, maybe there was two on. It's about time I saw a bloody cod here. Codling, anyway. I don't think it's legal, anyway. Whoa, bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs> You're safe enough in there. 40 centimeters is the, is the, is the limit here. So, it doesn't look like it. Probably 35 or something. It's a long time since I've seen a cod this size anyway. Oh, he is, he's legal. <laughs> okay, so if we get a couple more of these, we'll have dinner time. Yes. So, I'm going to make Jimmy this cod as well. I do this all the fish I eat. So, you go, if you are squeamish, look away. If you don't like to see me killing fish. So that's him, he's dead now. Now I get the wire. Anyway, so take it, pass it in. You'll know when you have it, that's not it. Now you see him all twitching and that. You don't really need to do this, but um, it does help with the bleeding. Cod are so tough. Not unless the wire was there, <laughs> maybe screw my knife up. <laughs> anyway, so then you finish the process by just pushing it down and it should come out the end. There you go. There it is, sticking out the end there. It travels down the spinal column. Now, into the bucket to bleed them. The water's really cold, it's five degrees, so don't need any ice blocks or anything. So that was exciting. First cod. 10 years on this beach, cuddling. Also, I'd like to add that uh, I'm wrong. That wasn't legal limit. That was five centimeters over legal limit. I can't believe it. 35 centimeters for a cod, cuddling. You can't do anything. You can't sell a fish that size. I don't know what it's about. Who's ever in charge of this, you ever see it? Sort it out, man. It's wrong. Maybe get a bite. That cod bite was spectacular, I have to say. 
So I'm learning, I'm learning. <laughs> so dab bites look like cod bites and cod bites look like great white bites, depending on what type of line you, you use. I'm gonna set up another rig. It's, uh, it's another three out circle with a hair. So I'm gonna bait this up as well. Here's the bait all rigged up and ready to go for the next one. So I got the new bait on. So I'm just using uh, the South African cast tonight because I got so much clothes on to keep warm that I, I can't get the, the finesse needed for pendulum casting tonight. But a South African cast is just as good as far as I'm concerned. Don't forget, get your drop, check it, swing into the cast, it's very easy. Easiest cast in the world. Goes a long way, <laughs> that's for sure. Nice little coddling. Keep G made, everything. Make a really nice dinner. There's the flounder there as well, 35 centimeters. Pick a G made as well. Uh, make a lovely dinner as well. Freezing cold water. It's like nice and fresh. So put a new rig on and lash it out. That's it now. So I'll put that in a nice bit of shorter. Maybe the fish are in a little bit closer now. Because I haven't had a bite now for a while, so. You gotta adapt, as they say. I'm afraid that this is actually a sand wedge. There's so much sand in it. <laughs> yeah, very crunchy hab. I have not had a fish since the, the bush. So I think this might be uh, my last cast unless I pick up a fish. So, about to bring in my last, my last rod. There might be some land, there might not be, but let's have a look anyway. <laughs> Look at the size of this one. <laughs> yeah. You gotta be careful when you're by yourself, eh? Definitely time to go home. I've been out there half an hour, it's completely untouched. I'm definitely going to fill it and cook. <laughs> With the with the coddling and the flounder. I'm interested to see if the Ikejime flounder tastes any better than normal stinky flounder. So that's it for tonight. Nice flounder, nice little coddling. I'm hey, Billy, this is Billy Fishing. If you like it, like it. Don't forget brothers, fish on. Thanks for watching.